Creating high quality materials is very important in photorealistic visualization. However, sometimes it happens that our material is flat, without any reflections and not exactly what it's supposed to look like. Today I will show you where you can download high quality textures and create V-Ray materials. Let's start! My name is Monica from edac.org. Look at the bricks behind my back. To create similar material, a simple diffuse map is not enough. We need bump and displacement. Today we'll create something similar. Let's start. I open the kitchen scene and I will work on the material that will be placed here above the tabletop. That's why I prepare texture maps. I downloaded the texture from the website textures.com. This is how it looks. And below there are all the maps that I will use in the project. Let's go to the folder. They've already been downloaded to the folder. If you wanna download these maps, it's in the description of the video below. Let's focus on the maps here. The first material is called Albedo. I will use this material in the Diffuse tab. If we had a similar material called Color or Diff, then this material will also be used in the Diffuse tab. Another file is AO, it's ambient occlusion, and thanks to that, we can obtain more realistic effect of the material. I will also use this map in the Diffuse tab, and these two maps will be connected to each other. Then we have a map called Height. It can be named Height or Displacement. I will use it in the Displacement tab. Then a blue-purple map called Normal. It will be used in the Bump. And the last map is Roughness. I will use this map for Reflections. Let's go to SketchUp and then to the Asset Editor. I created a new generic material. It's gray. And this material was applied to a plane above the tabletop. I want to change this material. Let's start with the Diffuse tab. Here I will upload the first Diffuse map. That's why I go to the Texture slot. I select the bitmap and select my texture called the Albedo. I open. I'm going backwards. I check how the map is placed on the plane. It's a bit too small, so I increase its size. I'm going to say to 120. I will move this map a little. Therefore, I apply the material to a single face. I right click, texture, position, and change the position of that texture. I approve it with Enter. It's ready. Let's see how the texture will look when we have uploaded only one map to the Diffuse tab. The visualization has been created. So far, this texture doesn't look very good. It's very flat, does not look realistic. Let's move on to this material in the Asset Editor. As I said before, in the Diffuse tab, there will be a texture which we have just uploaded and ambient occlusion. We need to connect these two maps together. How to do this? Firstly, I will clear this texture slot. Right-click and clear to go back to the gray texture. Now I go back to the texture slots, I left click and choose the mix operator, so I will mix two maps together. In texture A, I will upload the same map I uploaded before. I go back. And in texture B, I upload ambient occlusion. This black and white map. I go back. And in the mix operator, instead of adding these two maps, I will multiply them together. So I choose multiply. As a result, the textures of A and B are multiplied with each other. This effect will be much interesting. Once again, I have to resize the texture due to the fact that I removed the previous one. I can check the render. Visualization is created, textures look better. It's best to compare it with the previous visualization. And on the left side, there is a texture when we had only one bitmap loaded. And on the right side is the result of the multiplying two textures. 
If I come closer, we can see that the new material looks better. Therefore, if we download the textures and we have ambient occlusion, it's best to use this texture in the Diffuse tab. Let's move on to the Reflection tab. There is a file in the folder and it's called Roughness. We don't have any more maps for Reflections tab. Note that the map is named Roughness, and if the name of the map is Roughness, then for surface control, I should change Use Glossiness to Use Roughness. Then I turn on Reflection and set Reflection Color to the high or maximum value, and for Reflection Roughness, I upload the map. I select Bitmap, and then I look for Roughness Map. I open it. The map has been uploaded. If I go back, I can see that the reflection effect is quite intensive. This is due to the fact that in the reflection roughness, the space color should be changed to rendering space. Then the map will be much brighter and the effect will be softer and more realistic. The reflections are created. Let's see the result. The map looks much better. If I compare it with the result when there were no reflection, we can see that the map with reflections looks much better. It reflects light naturally and is brighter. Let's move on to the next settings and now I'm going to bump tap. There is a map in the folder that I will use for the bump tap. It's named normal and it's a blue violet in color. I go to the texture, upload the bitmap, and select it from the folder. Remember that if our map is blue, then color space should be changed to rendering space. Then the map is brighter and it will look better in the scene. I'm going back and remember to always change the map mode for blue maps to normal map. Here I can set the intensity of the BAM map. I will leave it to one. Now I can render. The visualization is created and if I compare this previous material with foul bump and this new one, I can see the difference. If I come closer, notice that on the right side we have a three-dimensional effect. This is because of the bump. And on the left side, when the bump is not there, the tiles are not three-dimensional, they are very flat. Therefore, when we want to show a three-dimensional effect, it's good to always set up a BAM map. I would like to increase the intensity of this 3D effect even more. I do it with displacement. Thanks to displacement, there will be even stronger 3D effect. Sometimes I use only BAM and it's enough. Sometimes it's good to use displacement map. It depends on the material. This time, I will use displacement. To do this, I click on plus icon next to the materials and add displacement. I expand the tab, turn on displacement, and then upload the map. The last map to be uploaded is here. It has the ending with height, and it can also have the name disp for a displacement. I use it to create a 3D effect. I open it, I go back, and I can also increase the intensity of the displacement. I will leave it as it is. Let's render. The visualization has been created and we can see the difference. On the left side, we have the material without displacement and on the right side, we have a displacement. We can see the difference that is really big. In this case, it was good to use the displacement map for this material. Let's move on to all the visualization we have created. There is a history tab on the left side and we can check all visualizations. I started with this material when I had only one map loaded into the material. Then I uploaded the ambient occlusion. The visualization has improved a bit. Then I added deflections and then displacement. All these maps together created very realistic material. We can also compare the material I started with and the material I ended up with. On the left side, there is a starting texture and on the right, really realistic material. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. Remember to check out my website, 
edac.org. There are many interesting SketchUp V-Ray courses. See you soon. Bye.